welcome back to my channel everybody where I make videos all about my life and adventures here in Taiwan. Sometimes I do videos about food, other times I share stories from my friends who are all here making lives for themselves on this beautiful island. No matter what, this channel leads me to adventure and I do my best to show you what Taiwan really has to offer from the ground up. Life is all about setting goals and challenges for yourself and today is no different as I've embarked on perhaps my most difficult journey to date. Let's get started, shall we? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Wes Davies here. I've got a very, very fun video for you guys today. It's something that I've never, ever done in Taiwan before. It's something that I've never thought about doing in Taiwan before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk from Kaohsiung, where I'm standing right now. You can see the 85 building in the background. I'm gonna walk from Kaohsiung all the way down to Kending. And the caveat is I am only allowed to spend 500 NT the entire journey. But I'm joined by my lovely girlfriend, Evelyn. I don't know where I'm going to sleep. That could be a big, big problem at some point. I don't know where I'm going to eat. I don't even know if this is going to be possible. Really looking forward to it. And thank you guys for following me along this journey. So nothing to do but to start walking. Let's go. Of course, we chose one of the hottest days of the year to start our journey. But at this point, our hopes for this adventure remained high. Part of this video, the whole idea is kind of the spirit of adventure. And I found a basketball. So let me film one basket here. Oh, thank you. That was fun. With spirits soaring after a successful basket, we continued back out into the relentless Kaohsiung heat. All right, I would say that we've just crossed a threshold. I can see Kaohsiung city proper behind us and up ahead is only the road going south. Passing by out of the way restaurants and tempting MRT stations, we eventually crossed the southernmost LRT tracks, familiar to me from my Kaohsiung LRT video from a few weeks back. See, I've driven to the airport a ton of times, but never did I know there was such a big river down here. I always think walking is the best way to see a city, as our eyes are open to the smallest details that we would otherwise whip right by when driving a scooter or car. The Pattaya Black Dwarf of Saciat. That is pretty terrifying. We have come to another MRT station, and to my knowledge, all MRT stations have washrooms inside. That could be maybe a useful tip if you're doing any kind of long walk or cycle trip. Maybe take a break in one of the MRT stations. There are little 7-Eleven booths down here as well. Hey look, Niagara Falls. This is in Canada. A little taste of home for me here in the MRT station. And it's nice and cool down here as well. Taking the time for a much needed respite, the MRT AC was like a paradise. Pretty clean. Cleanliness and hydration are key on an adventure like this, but as always, all good things must come to an end. And it was time to head back out into the sun. Just sitting right across from the airport here, found a nice little bench, have a little rest, have some water, and I checked my phone. I can't believe I've only walked 14,000 steps. I thought it would be at least 20,000 steps by now, and we're not even at Xiaogang yet. Is this a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be? Yes, very, very hot day. And honestly, right now, all I can think of is my air conditioned apartment right now. And actually, I got a very, very special gift from Emma Mattress. It is the new Emma Mattress frame. And I haven't even had a chance to sleep on it yet. Let me just jump back quickly and tell you about all the great deals that Emma has on right now. Let's go back to that nice air conditioned apartment for one second. Okay, here I am back in my loft style bedroom in my apartment. I can't imagine what Wes is going through on that big adventure down to Kenting, but I can say personally that I am very happy to be here sitting on my absolutely gorgeous brand new Nordic style Emma bed frame. So it did get delivered right to my apartment, free shipping all across Taiwan, and the delivery guy was nice enough to bring in all of the boxes, very manageable size, and it was honestly a lot of fun to build this thing it really gave me a sense of accomplishment. If you don't feel up to the task of building it all by yourself, you can also request the option that the delivery men will come up and help you assemble everything. So you don't even have to worry about that. As far as the instructions went, they were actually very, very easy to follow. You just scan the QR code on one of the boxes and it will take you to the entire manual of how to set up this bed frame. All of the tools were included in the box. So we had some screwdrivers, some Allen keys, all of the screws 
screws, and of course, all of the materials required for this Emma bed frame. As far as the actual assembly process went, it was very, very easy, step by step, and everything just went really smoothly, really rewarding. Now, every time I sleep on this, I can know that I personally put it together. One of the features I do love about this frame is you can see those wooden slats just rolled right out super, super easily. I love that design, and you can tell because there's actually space between the slats, it actually allows for better airflow. So you're never gonna feel too hot or too stuffy. And let me just say this about the actual material. Everything felt like really, really nice quality. All the metal felt solid. The wood even smelled great. My whole apartment right now smells like fresh wood. I did not expect that benefit. And then the cloth itself is really, really soft. You can tell it's not going to rip or tear. And I just love the design of this bed frame. As I mentioned, it is a Nordic style with German engineering. It does come in several different sizes depending on the size of the mattress you already have and you can also choose light gray or dark gray colors so it is very very customizable as well so you can see here I already have my queen size Emma mattress that I got last year I've got my Emma pillows here and now I've basically completed the entire set with the Emma Nordic bed frame so as far as I'm concerned I'm just going to have the best sleep ever every couple of months the quality of my sleep just goes up and up and up up the more Emma products I have in my house. So I live in Taiwan and like a lot of Taiwanese apartments, sometimes you have trouble finding space for everything, storage space. And one thing that I really love about this Emma Nordic style bed frame is that it actually comes with, in my case, four drawers, which just snug really tightly underneath the bed. So not only am I getting a beautiful bed frame, but also now I have four huge drawers that I didn't have before that I'm going to be able to store all kinds of things for my bedroom. I think that is so efficient and such a great way to use the space in my bedroom. And I don't know if you know this about me, but I love reading, I love books, and I especially love my Kindle. So what I really love is right beside where I sleep, I can just put my hand down and there is a very beautiful, slim little pocket that is the absolute perfect size for anything I wanna keep there. So if you think all of that sounds too good to be true, right now Emma is running something called the pre-Mother's Day sale. So we all love our mothers. I would absolutely love someday to give this as a gift to my mom. And right now, you can. Right now for the pre-Mother's Day sale, you can save 45% and you can save an extra 10% off using my special promo code WES10 at checkout. So those are absolutely huge savings. Just click the link right below and use my promo code WES10 at checkout and you are going to save more than 50% right now. I personally cannot be more satisfied with all the products I have. I am just lying up here basically in heaven every single night. Huge thank you to Emma for sponsoring this video. So <laughs> let's head back to the walk. Let's see how Wes is doing doing on that crazy 100 kilometer walk that he's up to. I absolutely cannot wait to go and sleep on all that great stuff when I get back home after this trip. Actually, this is kind of nice right here. Back when Evelyn used to live in Penghu, we did long distance for a while, Gaoshang to Penghu. I used to park my scooter right here and then go pick her up at the airport and then she would stay here for two or three days, bless her heart. Then I would drive back down here and drop her back off. And I always thought driving to the airport was a bit of a pain. Never imagined walking to the airport. And so we continued, the sun hitting our backs and our feet hitting the road, past the airport, past the last MRT stop, and past any hopes of turning around and pretending this was nothing more than some heat-stroked dream. We have now entered the phase of this journey that I have dubiously dubbed the never-ending dusty road. This is the part of the trip that I've been dreading because, you know, I've driven down to Kenting many, many times, and I know there's this huge stretch of road right here that is nothing but trucks, scooters, and dusty air but we persevere. To say that our enthusiasm for this walk was quickly falling away, just as the sun was inexorably falling down toward the horizon, may have been an understatement. The camera lens was mercifully hiding the layers of sweat and dust covering our skin and clothing, and the liters of water in our packs was surely wearing away the soles of our feet. And worryingly still, we had yet to make any real plan for where we were actually going to sleep that night. Was this going to be the adventure of a lifetime, or had I, perhaps through my own hubris, bitten off more than I could chew? The daunting path over the mountain ahead, which Google said would save us time, was surely holding the answer 
one way or another. Well, the good news is we got off that really busy highway, noisy highway. Potentially the bad news is we found ourselves on this very lonely mountain path. Google Maps says just walk right over this little ridge. It's much faster than walking all the way around it. We did see some dogs back there, but we're just going to keep going into the darkness, into the fading light, and we still don't know where we're sleeping tonight. This is the adventure. I, I know what's up here on these hills. It's, it's full of graveyards. This is a hill of graveyards. Well, I can't move my legs anymore. As the sun sunk below the trees, so too fell our luck. Google Maps said go that way. That is literally a military base. It looks like a bunch of bushes, but actually it's barbed wire fence camouflaged. So we are not going that way. Unfortunately, we have to turn back. Not wanting to risk a run-in with Taiwan's finest in the pitch dark, and with no assurances that any of these dusky paths would even lead us down the other side of the mountain, we turned back the way we'd come, completely erasing the last hour and few thousand steps of progress that we had made. Morale was low. Where are we? We're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is brutal. I just want to sleep on my ammo bed. That's all I want to do. We just need to get to the 7-Eleven. Wow, an actual turn in the road. We haven't seen a turn in the road for like five kilometers. That is the worst stretch of road. Am I being grumpy? I'm being a little grumpy. Stick helps though. And we don't know where we're sleeping tonight. With visions of Emma mattresses dancing in my head, all I could think about was being snug in my bed. But we pressed on down the dark and dusty road and prayed for the lights of a 7-Eleven to show. This is the hardest I've ever worked for YouTube. Walking is extremely inefficient. We do it for you, you know that? Please like this video, by the way. Please like and subscribe. At last the lights, red, orange, and yellow. I hobbled forwards, my grim mood now mellow. But what would become of this adventure of mine? Continue walking to Kending, or would I decline? It's a miracle. Woo! Okay, spoiler alert. Here I am, back in Kaohsiung, back in my home, and we actually did not finish the walk to Kenting. But there are some very good reasons for that. Okay, we're here at 7-Eleven. We walked all the way here, 35,000 steps. I went outside, I took off my shoes, I shook out the rocks and the sand. Unfortunately, there is a massive blister starting on my heel. I just feel like it wouldn't really be responsible for me to go on. So yes, it does turn out that perhaps we bit off a little bit more than we could chew. I know it sounds maybe a little bit disappointing, but I think that we can learn a lot of lessons from what actually happened in this video. Evelyn, to her credit, she was totally fine. She could have kept going. It was all me, my potentially fatal mistake of not training hard enough for this, and maybe even I was not wearing the right shoes. A friend of mine recommended that if I had actually gone out and got some proper walking shoes, that might have not happened. I might not have gotten those blisters and such sore feet. So now that I'm standing here back at home, do I regret the decision to try to walk to Kending? Absolutely not. I think it was a valiant effort. I tried my hardest and it was certainly an adventure no matter what the outcome was. As far as the 500 NT aspect of the video is concerned, we actually didn't spend a single dollar until we got to that last 7-Eleven and we just had to buy dinner and sort of check our phones and figure out if there was going to be a way to get back home that night. They say everything happens for a reason and it turns out that where we were at that 7-Eleven, literally right across the street was a bus stop and the bus that picked us up eventually took us all the way back home to Kaohsiung and it dropped us off directly across from my house. What a disaster. <laughs> say goodbye. See Kenting. Welcome back from Kenting. What a great trip to Kenting. <laughs> Can you really just walk normally right now? How? Really? I'm so jealous. So I was able to hobble back down the road, just a few hundred meters back to my front door and come upstairs and then pass out on my Emma mattress bed. It's nice to get off my feet. They're definitely gonna take a couple of days to heal, for sure. Those blisters were no joke. You could have kept going though. It's fine. Keeping up is not a bad thing. 
As long as you know what you want for yourself. I'm a little bit disappointed in myself, but also I think that was the responsible decision to make. If I had kept going, that would have just destroyed my feet even worse than they already were. I really tried my best and I think it was a good attempt. It is definitely something that I would like to do in the future, so maybe we can get a part two of this video going in the next couple of months. What do you guys think? Was this a letdown or is this just life? Please like this video and please subscribe to my channel if you are new here. And I really appreciate you guys for following me on all of these journeys, no matter how they end up. So thank you and I will see you later. Goodbye everyone, and thanks Evelyn.